And you know, in this range, in this range, in this range, because because the church oftentimes operates off of off of a paper program. Well, I'm getting to my text in just a minute. A paper program. Uh, and so and so if it's not written on the program, then then, then you ought not be doing it. Talk back to me. Yeah. Huh? If it's if it's not verbatim, well, I can read it on the program, then it ought not be done. But the question of the house is this morning, is what do you do when you have a printed program but the Lord said throw the program out the window? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Here it is. What do you do when the Holy Spirit shows up? And when you want to get to the next part of the program, but the Holy Spirit just took over. Yeah. Do you leave to your own understanding? Or do you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Do you leave to your own understanding? Or do you lift up your hands and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No one to help I go and I'll be brought my hand for me. What else do you lift up your hands and say, I, I surrender all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you have to come to that resolve. You have to come to that place in your life, brothers yeah. and sisters. What is what it is? It is all together about God, and has nothing to do, huh, with your name. Are you in here? And so, when you look at the work and what God has called you to do, understand. Verse number twelve says that you ought to work out your own soul. Time. Listen, quit worrying so much about what other folk are doing yeah. and start praying about start praying for the folk that you're worried about. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm helping somebody in here. In other, words, in, other, in, other, in other words, quit talking about folk and take your talk to Jesus. Okay, y'all don't like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If the church is going to be unified, uh -huh, I do less talking about and more talking to are you in here? And so, if God is going to foster a healthy relationship in the church, I cannot talk about you and pray for you at the same time. Look at them, look at them and say, amen. And so, and so, and so Paul says, listen, you have to work out your own soul salvation. And you do this with fear and uh, with trembling. Lord, have mercy. You do it with fear. Mm -hmm. huh? You do it, you do it with fear. Yeah. And with and with you, 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 are, you are cautious about how you handle Woo! the work that God has given you. Because at the end of the day, you do not want to let God die. Yeah. Are you in here? Uh -huh. Paul moves to chapter verse number 12, verse number 13. And he, verse number 13 answers three questions for us. Verse 13 answers three questions by way of positions, mm -hmm. well, for us, as it relates to the authenticity of the working out of your salvation. Mm -hmm. In turn, how the Christians ought to carry themselves, how the Christians ought to work, how the Christians ought to come together. The only way that you come together is when there is an understanding of who and whose we are. Yeah. Are you in here? Mm -hmm. First thing Paul says, listen, he says, understand, understand, understand. Understand, the church has to understand that God must work in us before he can work through us. So there has to be a great work in before there can be an effective work through. So God works in me individually, are you with him? So that I can be of help to you and everybody else collectively. So I'm saying, but now the question of is, saved to do what? Are you in here? What am I saved to do? And everybody in here will stand up and say, uh, uh, I'm saved to be a witness. I'm saved to tell somebody. I'm saved to tell, to tell somebody how good God has been. I'm saved to bring somebody to the Lord. Saved to do what? Paul answers three questions here. Not Paul answers. Paul answers who? Here it is. Who is doing the work? Who, who is doing? Who is doing? Who is doing the work? It's right here in the text. Verse number 13. Paul opens up. He says, it is God. God is the one who's doing the work. Are you in here? God is doing the work. Now, God takes, it takes, brother, will, God uses three tools 
by his spirit to work in our lives. God uses three tools. Look at your neighbor say three tools. God uses three tools. First tool God uses is the word. God uses his word. Two, God uses prayer. Three, God uses suffering. God uses his word, he uses prayer, and he uses suffering, if you will, if you will, to, 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 to get us to understand that he and he alone is the architect of our work. God uses the word, God uses the word, a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Everywhere I go, huh? I have to keep the word with me. Why? Because the steps of a good man are ordered by the law. And you do know that the law is not separate from his word. Because he is who he says he is. Oh, you need Bible, don't you? In the beginning of John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was, was with God, and the word was God. So the steps of a good man are ordered by his word. Yeah. So everywhere I go, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I, yeah. I make sure, I make sure, I make sure that, 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 that before I say something, that God uh, tells me what to say, uh, because I don't want to be guilty of saying the wrong thing to you, uh, and you walk out of those doors and live what you heard. Yeah. Are you in here? So God uses the word. Secondly, God uses prayer. How many of you know prayer changes things? Yeah. Ah. Ah. Do I have to listen to you talk about prayer changes things? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> prayer changes things. Well, the question is how? How does prayer change things? How, how does prayer change things? Man, I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that prayer changes nothing. See how far you got right there? Everybody right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prayer changes absolutely nothing. Here it is. The only one who can change prayer and make my prayer effective is God. So I pray to God who can make my prayers make sense. Are you in here? And if God can make my prayers make sense, then he answers my prayer. So prayer in and of itself changes nothing because anybody can pray. Anybody can mumble some words. But when you have some genuine authenticity behind your but don't you know that your Bible tells you uh, whether the two or three gather together, here it is, uh, in my name, yeah. I'll be in the midst. Yeah. That's why when you pray, you sign, you seal, you deliver that prayer in the name of Jesus. Then Jesus positions himself for God and man, in between God and man. And when I sit up my prayer, Jesus catches my prayer. Are you in here? Now, who is Jesus? Jesus is the one who intercedes on my behalf. Because there are going to be some prayers that I pray that I don't even have no idea what I said. But when I pray it and I send it to Jesus, because I said it in Jesus' name, and Jesus catches my prayer and he causes my prayer to make sense and he delivers the mail to the Father. Lord have mercy. And because my prayers go through Jesus, because they hit God, and since they go through Jesus and hit God, God answers my prayers not because of me, but he answers my prayers because of his son. Yeah, right. Look at that and preach about God. God is able to make my prayers make sense. But thirdly, 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 God uses suffering. Huh? God uses suffering. Suffering, brothers and sisters, will keep us on our knees. <laughs> uh, sickness suffering, problems, struggles, and hardships will keep us on our knees. Grandma used to say, son, you may not have had no trouble, but just keep on living. One of these days, trouble is going to knock on your door. Are you in here? And you're going to have to have the right response. And it's better to have him and not need him than to need him and not have him. Yeah. And Father Six folk can testify you remember some days in your life uh, where you didn't know if Jesus was there because you were so caught up in your own self. Uh, yeah. You were so caught up in your own feelings. Uh, yeah. But then uh, when you discovered that you were seeking deep in sin, 
fall from the peaceful shores. Deeply stained with them, seeking a rise no more. The master of the sea heard your despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now safe, safe am I. And so the, old, the resolving boys of the church ought to be loved. <laughs> lifted me yeah. with nothing else could help. Yeah. Love yeah. lifted me. Well, he says, listen, who's doing the work? God. God is doing the work. God is doing the work. And understand, if God is doing the work, guess what? The work gets done. You see what I said? When God does the work, the work gets done. When I step out of outside and uh, of God and think that I'm doing it on my own, then typically the work gets half done. The worst work that I ever got in my life, huh? When my daddy woke me up six o'clock on a Saturday morning to go mow the yard, he knew I didn't want to do. Not because he woke me up at six o'clock, but he knew I didn't want to do it because when he got home that afternoon, patches. In the yard. My daddy come busting through the room and say, son, listen, I could have done this myself. Are you in here? He said, if you gonna have to do the job, don't do it at all. Are you in here? So the outcome was that my daddy knew that I did not want to mow the grass, not because I didn't mow it, but it was how I mowed. And oftentimes we're so concerned about uh, uh, quantity versus quality. Did y'all hear what I just said? How many folk in church versus working with the ones that are here? Are you in here? Because the reality of it is that God will grow the church when the folk in the church grow up. Ah, uh, preach about what I'm trying to. And that's where we are right now, New Prophet. God is simply trying to grow us because he's going to keep on adding to the church. But he wants to know that he can keep on adding because the ones who are here keep on growing up. How do you grow up happy dogs? I grow up every time I lift up the name Jesus. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'm drawn all men unto me. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Get out of here. This is who's doing the work. God. God is doing the work. Where is God doing the work? Where, where is he working? He says, it is God which worketh. Watch this. In you. Mm. It is God which worketh in you. That word worketh. That word work. That word worketh. 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 Uh, Greek word in the game. Oh, gives out English word energy. A force. A spiritual figure. Are you in here to, to get up and be about your father's business? Now, let me say this here. Let me say this. Uh, just because you came to church this morning doesn't mean that you felt like coming. Uh, I think me and Clement, D. Clement and I talk about this pretty regular. Brothers and sisters, that, you know, Sunday morning is the hardest day. Open time to get up and go to church. Uh, often. Often the hardest day is get up. And it's strange because on Monday morning, uh, it's easy for us to get up and go make pennies. Talk back to me if you can. Uh, and you might get up, grumble, and complain, but you guess what you say, Lord, let me get all in here. Uh, uh, and make these pennies. And you get a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday.